Hey, horror fans, welcome back to J vs. Horror. Guys, this is Tag Wars. That's right, your old buddy Jay got involved in something. Now, I tagged Bill Rodriguez from Horror Movie Review Maniacs, and I tagged him with the film The Beyond. And Bill watched The Beyond, and he did a review of it, and he tagged me back with Nosferatu in Venice which I had to go seek out and watch because I had not seen before this. And so, yeah, that's how Tag Wars works. If you want to play, go to Horror Movie Review Maniacs on Facebook, join up to the group there, and uh, tag somebody. Get a couple friends to join. You can tag someone, have them tag you back. You do reviews. You can do them there in the group. You can do them on YouTube, however you guys want to do it. So I got challenged. Bill's review is up on YouTube uh, at Horror Movie Review Maniacs. And so I had to watch Vampire in Venice. That's what it was titled when I saw it. Vampire in Venice. It's actually Nosferatu in Venice. Uh, guys, this is one of those films where <laughs> I have to say, like, the story of the film is far more entertaining than the actual film. It's a 1988 Italian horror film. Uh, directed by everybody and starring uh, Klaus Kinski, who also is known to have directed some of this, Christopher Plummer, Donald Pleasance, and Barbara DeRozzi. So you might say, how could this film miss with a cast like that? And they all do a great job, and the film's not terrible, guys. It's just, uh, well, let me explain. After securing Kinski for the lead of Nosferatu, and remember, guys, this is very important, too, we're not talking about Dracula. This is Nosferatu. And uh, I was watching this and Regina walked in and she was like, man, that's an ugly pick <laughs> for a vampire. And I, it kind of explained, you know, the historical importance of Klaus Kinski uh, in these films. And then it came to me that, yeah, I mean, it's very easy with this story to think of it as a Dracula type character. But Nosferatu is a little different than Dracula, unless you want to say they're both the same thing because we are just talking about vampire legends here anyway, right, guys? I'm just talking about the portrayal of it. And uh, so after securing Kinski for the lead of Nosferatu, producer August Caminito planned a sequel to Werner Herzog's Nosferatu the Vampire, which was a earlier 80s film that was very good. Now, Caminito originally secured Mariuzo Lucidi as the director but later felt the film would be better with a well more with a more well-known director and a slightly higher budget. So this led to Lacidi being dropped as the director in favor of Pascal Squateri. Squateri made several changes to the script immediately, which did not appeal to Caminito. This led to him paying Squateri and terminating his contract immediately. This also led to further budget cuts at this point in the filming and hiring of uh, Mario Chiano now as the director of this film. And after clashing with the notoriously uh, hard to deal with, hard to work with at times, genius Klaus Kinski on set, uh, Chiano also left the film, and this left no one other than Caminito, the producer, and Klaus Kinski themselves, and they directed the film, what was left of it. And during filming, Klinsky flipped out. He would not allow rehearsal because he wanted to stay in character and demanded a change in actors at different points. He often had lighting change just dramatically out of nowhere on the set. And according to the second unit director, Luigi Kazi, Kinski's behavior on set became so erratic that the entire crew left the set and did not return until Klaus apologized for his rude behavior. After six weeks of filming, Caminito came to the conclusion that he did not have the entire film completed. Imagine that, after six weeks. But that he also could not continue with the project. This led to entire sections of the rewritten screenplay not being shot. And Caminito eventually making do with, well, what they did have. The film premiered at the Venice Film Festival on September 9, 1988. And it was later released theatrically in Italy. Now, from that story, guys, when you watch this movie, it's all right there. It's all on the screen. You can tell that a lot of this movie got cut. Uh, there's some jumps in the story that you you really feel like there needs to be another scene there. 
Uh, but I will say this. It is kind of beautifully shot. I thought I was very surprised at the fact it went through this many directors because uh, as far as scenery and setting and stuff like that, it's very beautifully shot. Uh, it has a couple great scenes in it, even. There's an impaling scene that is not what you would think for a vampire film that I thought was very interesting. And there's also a very uh, striking scene of power, like an exhibition of power by Nosferatu uh, in one scene where a guy tries to stop him with a shotgun and it doesn't work out too well for him. So basically what we have here is a professor and some people from the church and some mystics. They all get together and they realize that uh, Nosferatu's last place, the last place he was trailed to is here in Venice at a carnival 190 years earlier. No one's seen him since, but they're pretty sure he's in this one family, this prominent family's tomb, and they want him out. So they all start talking about what they're going to do. They have a seance, and through the seance, they find out that all he really wants is to die. So they think, why not let him out? We'll help him get out. You know, we'll use our, our power. We'll help him get out. And uh, once he's out, we'll kill him. Well, then things kind of take a turn. This is one of those moments where you wonder, uh, you know, he constantly talks about, or they talk about how he wants to die, but it seems like there would be ways if he really wanted to die, right? Uh, there are ways to kill vampires, even in this film. Uh, but... So we see Nosferatu hit the town. It's kind of similar to like Dracula in London to an extent. Uh, he is wooing a woman who, uh, you know, initially <laughs> is is upset by his presence, but now is like, you know, under his spell. And uh, the film has kind of a tragic ending. I, you know, it's it's hard to grade this one because, like I said, there's so much missing from it, and so much that we don't even know uh, what's missing from it different scenes that couldn't be shot and stuff that was shot that wasn't finished and all kinds of stuff. But from what they pieced together here, it's still a slightly interesting art film. Not really even an art film, just kind of an artistic take on Nosferatu. I mean, I think at this point uh, in 88, probably the Dracula thing had been done to death and you'd had other actors come along and take up that mantle after Bella quit. So Nosferatu was kind of a different take on the vampire character, and you could bring somebody like Klaus Kinski in. And, uh, of course, there was, like I said, a very successful film. If you want to watch a really good uh, Nosferatu film, uh, watch that original film directed by uh, Werner Herzog, uh, Nosferatu the Vampire, which you can also find on Tubi TV. This one's on Tubi TV, too, if you want to watch it. And so I'm giving the film 6 out of 10. I think it has some... Uh, visually visually interesting moments and the setting is nice and it's great to see all these really good actors together uh it's like when you make something and you follow the recipe step by step and you do everything exactly right and then when you're done you take a bite and you're like son of a bitch this needs salt or something like that i mean it's, it's all there it just doesn't work exactly the way it could and uh, probably because a great deal of the story was cut, which is unfortunate because what's there is decent, and there are some decent scenes that are that are kind of memorable. But uh, other than that, it's kind of a not memorable <laughs> film altogether. Uh, other than for the story, I enjoyed that quite a bit, a little history lesson. I like to read everything I can find about movies and stuff, so that was interesting. I found that to be worth the time. And thanks, Bill, for tagging me with this movie that I had never seen before. And, uh, guys, we're putting it out there. Go join Horror Movie Review Maniacs and tag somebody. Get a friend to join or tag one of us. We will go watch the movie that you want us to watch, and we will review it. And, guys, we will talk to you the next time we've got something worth talking about. Bye.